Hey guys, Erin Nicole, creator of the Move Happy Movement. So how can I, Erin Nicole, and Move Happy empower you to start adding more fun to your day regularly? <clears throat> so if you're like me, you work extremely hard, you're a type A personality, and you might, you might not feel like you deserve fun in your day sometimes. What works best for me is to plan fun activities just like I would like a doctor's appointment into my day before the day begins. I use the David Bird Achievement Planner and I have been using it since, since I purchased it at a conference in I believe April of 2015. I know the year is correct. Uh, there is a to-do section that I only put five things max. Um, at, it's at the top little section, it's like about that big. Um, so I actually will star two of those five items as my priority to complete. Those starred bullet points um, since I moved across the country have been the post of the day for Move Happy and my workout of the day. So I know I feel better and accomplished, which makes me enjoy the rest of my day when I get to draw like a line crossing through them that I did those, that I accomplished those. Uh, that's fun for me. If I get to the other three bullets of the day, I am even more proud of my accomplishments. However, if I don't quite get to those, I simply just write them on the next day as another thing to do. Maybe they turn into a regular bullet to a star uh, to prioritize them if I really have to do three stars for that day. Um, I also have a list of to-dos in the middle section of the sheet that I write for things that I need to do, but it's not today, it's like later that I wanna keep top of mind. And I will repeat, write them down in that section every single day until they either move from the to do later to up to today, or I decide that I no longer really need to do them anymore. Sometimes life changes and it helps to, to bring a little bit of clarity. Um, so my right hook for the day is to encourage you to buy a planner to help you get more organized if you don't already have one. I promise you the more organized you are, the more you're gonna be able to get done throughout your day, and then you're gonna be able to have more time to do the things that you really love to do. If you have a lot of things that you have to do, why not do them more efficiently and effectively? I have taught myself through this planner and through my own just knowing and hard work, I've been able to cut 1,200 hours every single year in order to accomplish a lot more things. And I want that for you guys. And I hands down, I know that the David Bird Achievement Planner, and he's not paying me to say this, um, I know that it helped me to build that foundation so freaking much. Um, I'm, I'm the living example of his particular planner. So I hope to, um, I have edified him in person. I got to shake his hands, which was really neat. Um, and I, I hope to be able to do more with him because he is such an intelligent being. His daughter is amazing. She actually is a guest on the podcast um, from my first year. Um, <clears throat> so if you do purchase it, um, they do, they also include like a CD or I think it's now a downloadable to help you to actually use, like to figure out how to use the planner. Cause there's a lot, there's a different aspects of it. It's not just a calendar thing to keep you organized. He also does a vision statement and he trains you on how to write your vision statement for a five-year plan. Um, monthly tab sheets that I made one post about, or actually not a post, but a comment within Damon Johns, uh, the CEO and founder of FUBU within his, on LinkedIn, his post that he made about, uh, what are some ways that you guys stay organized with your planners? I like have 40 people that have reached out and people have purchased David Bird's planner from that particular post. Cause I'm confident in it being effective for my life. And when, when my accounts got compromised in the winter of 2020, uh, fall and winter, and all of my digital technologies got locked up, I still was able to stay organized because it's paper and they can't mess with my paper. Keep it simple, guys. Always do paper. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I actually first heard, I heard about the planner actually at a Neora conference. It was called A Different Name at the time in 2015 in California. I had signed up to become a brand partner when I taught high school for the first time at Stadium High School in Tacoma, Washington. The year prior, I worked at JBLM Joint Base Lewis McCord as a health educator and sadly had to cut my contract short uh, because I was experiencing PTSD triggers so strong from my rape from that had occurred in 2007 because my stress level was so high. 
Um, I actually did not properly, and I'm, I'm own, owning up to this now, I did not properly take care of myself through therapy and healing. I, I stuffed it, I ran a lot, and I used music instead, um, but that healing still needed to take place. And when I had too much stress that year, um, I had to cut my contract early. Um, I wasn't able to complete the full year um, at JBLM. So the next year, um, I had gotten... Whew, I had gotten married uh, to my now ex-husband. Thank the Lord. Uh, we got a puppy. We moved to a different city because we were for two years living next to his parents. We had a suicide in the family while we lived next to his parents. Like we went through a lot in a short amount of time. I moved to a new school district and I got back into teaching schools after the year prior to working at JBLM. I was falsely accused from a jealous co colleague that tried to ruin my career and send me to prison. Like, this is real shit, guys. I love God, but I curse a lot. Um, so I'm just being myself. I was understandably stressed. I had a lack of trust in people. And I did not ever want to have five part-time jobs like I did that year prior to working at JBLM. So I knew that working wasn't working anymore and I needed to do something different. So I'm so super grateful for Gretchen for introducing me to Neora. Back then it was called Nerium. Um, and the opportunity to make more income outside of my work hours from my smartphone. Because I had just gotten a smartphone for this business particularly. I had an Android thing when I worked at JBLM and it just it was confusing to me. So I went and got a different phone. So at the conference in, back in 2015, David Bird spoke to 17,000 of us brand partners, and he edified, Jeff Olson did, uh, he edified David, the CEO of the company. Uh, this is, um, the company grew in the first, I was in the first five years, I was in year three, I believe. It grew to $1.5 billion and broke every single record in the direct sales industry in a 150 year industry. I got to be a part of this leadership. So when, when the top leadership of a company that creates a culture of winning, tells you that you need to listen to this guy, you listen. So I leaned in and Jeff told us that he pays David to coach all of the top income earners, how to balance their lives in all areas, help them to live the life of their dreams. I was soaking it up guys. He said, every one of the top leaders has the achievement planner. And I was sold in that moment. I was like, I'm going to follow whatever the top leaders that are making good money are doing. So, <clears throat> Gretchen introduced me to the company. Um, I met her at, at, a, at the Puyallup Fair, actually. I won a free uh, product through a little, you know, drop your information in for skincare. The skincare was amazing. And then she told me that there's a business tied to it and whatnot. And was I interested in making more income? She had, girl, she had no idea how much I was needing more income. She changed my life. She literally changed my life. And she also, her husband played on the worship team with my mom. So I already knew I could trust her good people. <clears throat> yeah, good people. So I started plugging away at this planner and going to every single training the company had. Um, I didn't make a lot of income from the company, but that wasn't really my focus. My particular focus, and, and people might not understand that when you go into direct sales, you don't always go for the money. Like some people go to make friends, some people go for the culture, some people just love the products and they just wanna like have parties once a week with people. I mean, like you go, or some people wanna make a ton of money. It just, it depends on your purpose. For my particular focus, um, I wanted to build foundational skills. I wanted to increase my social health because I was extremely isolated with my partner. He was a lot older than me. He spoke for me. Um, I was not confident. I never talked in the room. He never introduced me or asked me questions. So I was kind of like the trophy wife, if you will. And I'm embarrassed to say that. Uh, no, I'm not embarrassed anymore because um, I'm letting it out. It's I'm now free from that. Um, and I'm no longer with that person anymore. So thank the Lord. Um, I was never allowed to use his smartphone because anytime he would ask me to do something on it, he would never show me. I took too long. He would grab it back and uh, we were trying to save money as a couple, whatever, even though his parents gave him a $26,000 allowance every year just for breathing. <laughs> I'm so glad that I'm single. Anyways, <laughs> so I didn't feel like I was valuable enough to have a smartphone, but when enough struggle doing the, the traditional thing that all 
the whole country was telling us to go to college, you get a job, and then you have this beautiful life. And I had a master's degree and then five part-time jobs two years prior to that and still wasn't able to pay on my student loans. The system is broken. And so I started listening to these people that were making good money, that were making a culture to help transform the world and the United States, and they did. They broke every single record. They broke every single record, and I'm so blessed that Gretchen introduced it to me. However, many abused children that go that grow into adults, they tend to work really hard and self-sabotage. I wanted to make sure I was enjoying every single aspect of my life as I grew more confidently as a business owner because I had already uh, had my first thoughts around suicide when I was 14. I didn't like it. I had some more thoughts when I struggled When my stepdaughter's boyfriend committed suicide, I really struggled uh, because my partner, I had five part-time jobs. I had lost one of them. So now I had four for the second half of the year uh, from January to June. I had lost so much weight that he didn't even see me disappearing. He never once said, hey, here's some money. Like I had to pay bills to the household to contribute instead of him saying, hey, do you want to work? Because a real man to me will provide and you have the option as a woman to work if you want to because you're already adding value. I showed up to every single game for my eldest stepdaughters, cheerleading for all the football games, all of the band concerts. Um, I drove them to things. I picked them up from school. And just because I didn't get paid for those things doesn't mean that it wasn't value. He didn't pay me for working for the family. So why didn't he step up? to help me when I almost committed suicide. And I finally got to my breaking point and I told him I had a plan and I said, this relationship is not working. You are my trigger. You and I are not working. So he moved us, he tried his best to move us away from his parents, to stop putting pressure on me and to start stepping up as a man because I called my dad crying one day and I was like, dad, I think he's gonna propose to me and I'm not ready to marry someone unless he loves God is gonna take care of the family and he's gonna step up as a man. So he started getting into therapy, my ex-husband now. He and I went to church. For about six months, we went as a family. We actually went with um, my stepdaughter's mom. We went to their church, all of us joined. We had so much unity. Um, and for those of you with kids watching, pause it, have them leave. Okay. He and I did not have sex for six months and I didn't miss it. I didn't know that we didn't have sex. I wasn't planning to not have sex with him. He had made me lose sexual interest in him because he was not a man. He did not take care of me as his partner when I was taking care of him and his children. And I was never going back to that life again. So when he and I got married and then he told me that he wasn't really serious about going to church anymore. We stopped praying and he made fun of my faith, would not let me tithe uh, through our money. I had to tithe through my own money, but my own money was in his bank account. So I wasn't even allowed to give to the church that I wanted to. That is when I said enough is enough. I never was going to marry you if you were lying about being a Christian to me and loving God and loving people. You are not exemplifying it. You are a miser. You are holding all of your money because his parents have multi-million dollars. And when we went through the divorce process, he is the one that moved our whole bank account to a secret account. And I had to struggle financially and went through financial disarray. But God is a restorer of everything. And this year, this year he gets to watch me shine and watch me make all of this money and be able to give so much money away to people and realize because I do believe he was involved in the digital attacks of my business in 2020 because his email account was the retrieval through my iCloud and I did not put it there. He will realize the mistakes that he's made in his past and it's up to God to judge him. I've let it go. I think I think it was a famous singer in, I wanna say the 30s, maybe 40s, maybe a little bit later, Frank Sinatra says, 
the biggest revenge is massive success. This planner helped me to have massive success, to get organized, to be able to have way more fun in my life. I have a friend that I met through social media that's extremely financially successful, does like four or five businesses, nonprofit, the whole bit, always is working, always is busy, never wants to have fun. And I'm like, I don't really want to spend time with you if you're always working and you never want to allow yourself to have fun. Plan fun in your day or get more effective and efficient with your processes that you can hire people out or you can get volunteers um, if you want to spend time with me. Love you guys. Check out the planner in the comments and I really encourage you to buy it if you don't have one already. Um, hands down. And this is my right hook today. I'm not even trying to get any money for myself because I do believe that I'm going to work with David Bird or Jeff Olson somehow. I just, I feel that in my heart. They did so much for me, healing my mind, uh, breaking me free from a man that did not treat me as the queen that I am. They helped me create a pathway to success for myself, to find joy again. And that's that's priceless to me. Love you guys. Thank you for checking it out. Drop your thoughts, ideas in the comments. If you are currently using the planner and you have success from it, I'd love to hear those stories and that'll help other people to want to purchase it as well. Don't forget to tell someone you love them today and I'll see you next week.